Hi and welcome. I'm Reverend Allie Bierman and you are joining us for the gathering of the Metaphysical Ministry. Well, what is the Metaphysical Ministry all about? Well, first of all, spirituality and metaphysics are completely different things from religion. So you won't find any religion here of any sort. But what metaphysics does is it explains how we create our reality, how our world comes to being, why things look as they do, and it's coupled with the philosophy that's attached to quantum physics. Now you can find all kinds of scientific, verified scientific experiments happening all over the world, documented, explaining how we do in fact create our reality by how we look at something how we think about something, how our thoughts are real energy that are impacting the energy that's all around us, that everything is actually an illusion and only appears to be solid because we're thinking that thought. We're focusing on it. We're taking it out of its waveform and making it a solid object. And if you don't understand any of that, no, the only thing that matters is we're talking about the fact that you are creating your reality in every moment. Now we begin every week with a happy share. So what is a happy share? A happy share is something that happened this week that left you feeling happy. Ta-da! Happy share, feeling happy. And it's something that left you feeling calm or peaceful or just good. It created these feel-good chemicals running through your body. It wasn't about something that happened for your kids or your partner or your best friend, it was something that happened for you in your world that left you feeling happy. And I'm very, very excited because I just put up an organization that you can join on Facebook where you can go in every day and share your happy share and see what other people's happy shares are. And you can find that at facebook.com forward slash the happy share movement. And I'll put that link maybe up there for you. And I'm also, well, I don't know if I'll be putting up a web page, but I might be putting up a web page for those of you who don't have Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. For those of you who don't have Facebook, yeah, I will put up a web page because not everybody has Facebook. Not everybody wants to use it. And that is the Happy Share Movement .com. See, I'm out to create this whole habit that people are looking in their lives, every day they're looking for things that make them happy. Why am I doing that? Because you feel good. What happens when you feel good, when you're happy? Your vibration shoots up there, and guess what's up here? Everything you want in life, everything that lets you live in abundance, it's up here. And unless your energy level vibrates up there, you don't have access to it. So instead of the default way of thinking, you notice people walk around with a ho-hum look. If you ask them how they feel, they say, fine, okay, getting by. The default way of being, for some reason unknown, is negative. And it's low energy, and people move low and slow energy instead of up here in the high, fast energy. You can always recognize people who are living in a happy place because they tend to speak faster, they walk faster, they stand straighter, and they laugh for what seems to be no reason. Anyway, the way to get there is creating a new habit. Instead of looking for what's wrong and what's missing, you look for things that leave you feeling happy. And guess what happens when you find something that leaves you feeling happy? Well, first of all, because your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined, oh, you're making it all up anyway. But the fact is, your subconscious mind will relive that moment, which means your physical body will feel almost happy, feel good, peptide running through all over again. And, the other thing that happens is the universe sees you having, experiencing happiness about so many things. It gives you more. So by creating the happy of noticing happy shares and sharing them, you get to have even more every single day. Say so every week I come here and I don't know, I have to pick which one should I share with you today. Well, the really big one is that I finally went ahead and created the happysharemovement.com 
and the Happy Share Movement on Facebook. And let's see, which one should I share? Well, I've been waiting all summer long for my garden to do something that's growing really, 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 really slowly. And I went out there this morning, and my tomato plants are chock full of tomatoes. And I've got okra growing well, maybe even actually have enough for a meal. I got cucumbers for the first time this season, and finally my cilantro and spinach are growing. I love to grow my own food, and that's a really huge happy share for me. Because I thought, I didn't know why, but I thought, my garden's just not doing it this year. It's doing it, and it's doing it now. What's your happy share? If you go ahead and scroll down and you put it in there, you know what? As I said, you'll get to relive whatever it is that made you feel good. And other people reading your happy share, they might just see themselves in that happiness, experiencing it through you. You might make somebody's day. So just scroll on down, leave what your happy share is, and go ahead and go on over to thehappysharemovement.com. And if you do it every day and you put something in, you know what happens if you do it every single day consistently for 28 days? It'll be a habit for you. It'll be a habit that will change your world. It will change your life. And you know what else it'll change? It'll change the planet because you don't live all by yourself and your energy's up here and everybody in your world, they'll feel it. And they'll ask what you're doing and you tell them. And they'll start doing it too. And one by one by one, the frequency of the planet will rise to one of happiness, to one of abundance, to one where there is enough of everything for everyone on the planet. Cooperation and love. That's what life is about, and that's why you're here. Now, this is a week for meditation. So, I want you to go ahead and get comfortable, whether you're sitting, standing, lying down, whether your eyes are open or closed doesn't really matter. Just be comfortable so you have no distractions. And you're going to start with the breathing. We're going to do a cycle of three, what are called sacred G breaths, because your subconscious mind knows when something happens in three around your breath, it's time to meditate and you will shift in to a whole different level of alpha alpha waves, I don't remember, all the different brain waves, they're going to shift and actually this particular breathing method will put you through all the different kinds of waves to get you to the deep place where whatever it is that you want, that you focus on, will come to you much more easily. So first thing, breathe in through your mouth and out through your mouth, in through your mouth, out through your nose, in through your nose, out through your nose, in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your mouth, and out through your mouth, in through your mouth, and out through your nose, in through your nose, out through your nose, in through your nose, and out through your mouth. Breathe in through your mouth, and out through your mouth. Breathe in through your mouth, and out through your nose. Breathe in through your nose, and out through your nose. Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Now again, you can leave your eyes open or closed. Put your hands in front of you and just be aware of them and notice. Does one hand feel differently than the other or do they both feel about the same? And just notice. For most people, both hands will feel pretty much the same. So now what you're going to do again with your eyes open or closed. 
is you're just going to take three deep breaths. But while you're breathing, inhaling and exhaling, focus on only one of your hands. And if you're right-handed, focus on your left hand. If you're left-handed, focus on your right hand. So you're breathing in and out the energy of life into that hand. Okay? And inhale. And exhale. And inhale into that hand. And exhale. And again, inhale into that hand. And exhale. Now, once again, notice your two hands. Does one hand feel different from the other? And if so, how? If you look up there, you will see a page that says, hold a space for it. And on that page are names of people and things that they ask us to hold a space for. Well, what does that mean? Well, when somebody wants to manifest something in their life, make it part of their reality, the way to do that is by making a request of the universe. Feeling into that request, your feelings go out, create a thought form, the universe reads it, delivers it at the time that's right for you. Well, the more people who are participating in your thought form, the bigger it gets to be. There's more there for the universe to notice, and so it comes to you more easily and sooner. So go ahead and scroll down below. Put in your name and what it is that you want to be living in your reality that you are at right now. Okay. And I just remembered something. Let's finish this first. Come back every week because when it goes down there, it will also go up there. I will put it on the Hold the Space for a page. Read the name and what the request was that we hold the space for. You don't have to know who the person is. The universe knows. And you will be helping somebody change their life and change their world. And they... We'll be doing the same thing for you. Tell your friends and family. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really will make a difference for you. Now, I'm sitting here in front of this very interesting piece of art. And what that art is, is called sacred geometry. Okay, Ellie, what is sacred geometry? When you study life, and all of creation, you find there are very, very definite patterns in everything, in your DNA, in the spirals of a snail shell or a nautilus shell or many of the shellfish, in the universe and how the galaxies are formed, in a tree and its branches and how they spread so that each one gets sunlight, lightning and how it branches out. They're very, very definite mathematical formulas of how things repeat themselves. And if you have super powerful microscopes, you can observe anything and go deeper and deeper and deeper within it and you will see the same pattern repeating on a smaller and smaller and smaller level. I remember reading about fractals when I was a teenager and we're talking 45 years ago. Well, this explains what fractals are. And you may remember somewhere in school learning about the Fibonacci sequence. Those are numbers where the sum equals the two preceding numbers. <coughs> so you have 1 plus 1 equals 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 1, I'm sorry, 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. And on and on and on. Now here's what's extraordinary about the Fibonacci numbers. If you take any one of those numbers and divide it by the number that came 
that came before it, you will always, always, always come up with a number that's almost exactly 1.618013. That's because nature is so precise. And sacred geometry, and I'm going to put a, a link mm, up here, down there, <laughs> somewhere. I'm going to put a link over there. Go visit this page and learn about sacred geometry. You'll find some very fascinating meditations to do with sacred geometry. Some screensavers that you can download. I have a screensaver on my own computer that's sacred geometry. Not only is it protection, from EMFs, electromagnetic fields. It also is protection from my own negative energy if I happen to go someplace thinking I thought this lesson happy. This pattern right here is one made by Corey Herter and he calls it Sacred G Fusion. And if you go and put your hand on any artwork that's sacred geometry, you will feel energy bouncing off it. You might feel it as heat. You might feel it as cold. I guarantee you'll feel energy. And it's life-altering energy. I first heard about sacred geometry about 15 years ago. And somebody had a placemat with a sacred geometry pattern. And I'm a specialized kinesiologist, so I understand muscle testing. And she muscle tested somebody holding a bag of sugar. She then put the sugar on the placemat for 10 seconds. Picked up the sugar, the person held it, muscle tested again. That sugar was altered in that short 10 seconds by sitting on the sacred geometry pattern. So it was no longer something harmful for her. I have many, many of these sheets. I'll put them under my computer. It keeps it working better. I sleep on a whole stack of them. It helps me to do healing, to get my brain waves into the place they need to be so I can recover during sleep, because if you don't go to that place, you're going to age. And sometime I'll do a whole talk on what this pattern does for you, what it's doing in your brain, and why it causes healing, but not here and not now. Anyway, if you'd like one of these patterns, just send me an email, or you know what, go ahead down below and leave a comment. It will come to me privately, I won't share it. I'll have your email, and I'll tell you how you can get one of these. And I'll share it to you. I'll, I'll mail one to you for what it costs me, plus the shipping and handling. So, I'm so very glad you joined me here today. And if you haven't done so already, if you're going right over there, put in your name and email address, I will send you a copy of how to take your first steps on your spiritual path. Because as I said before, Spirituality and religion are two different things. Thank you again for joining me here, and I appreciate your going down below and clicking on the like button, letting your friends who are looking for some spiritual, some explanations for why their world looks the way it does, and you're not going to find those in religion, send them here. Share what you discover. And let me know what's going on for you and with you. And I will see you next week. Blessings.